Well, hello, free people of the Rocky Mountain region. My name is Brandon, and welcome to this Free State Colorado interview. The mission of Free State Colorado is to promote a culture of liberty, freedom of the individual, and a free market. Today, I'm joined by a man of many names. You may know him as Mark, J.P. Funkler, Martin Funkhauser, the Funkmeister, the self-proclaimed Colorado cutie, and the Rocky Mountain Michael Heiss. Now, Funkhauser has served on the board of the Libertarian Party of Colorado and was the principal organizer of the Mises Caucus takeover of the Colorado Libertarian Party at last month's convention. Mr. Funkhauser, thank you for joining me today. Uh, thank you so much for having me. This is exciting. Well, first of all, can you explain what is the Mises Caucus? Um, so I guess the general answer, answer would be that it, it's a, a, a caucus within the Libertarian Party. Um, it was created by a man named Michael Heiss, uh, I believe at the end of 2017, around November, um, with the purpose of promoting um, economic literacy within the Libertarian Party uh, as taught by the Austrian School of uh, Economics, which is where the name derives from, uh, Ludwig von, von Mises. Um, he was sort of one of the pioneers of Austrian uh, economics. Um, and that's sort of like the, the general answer. The more nuanced answer, I guess, would be it's, um, it's that it's like a collective of frustration. Um, it's the result of inaction and poor leadership from the Libertarian Party. Um, it's, but it's also, it's a group of like highly motivated um, individuals from all over the country that see the Libertarian Party as a, a legitimate vehicle for enacting change. Um, but we kind of just think the, the current people that are driving uh, this vehicle are drunk or suffering from night blindness. Or, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's like, it, it's the kind of the broad answer. It's just, you know, we're, we're a formal caucus that's looking to get shit done. Uh, and the more nuanced answer is we're just people from that have kind of just felt disenfranchised by the, you know, obviously the the Democrats and the Republicans, but also though now within uh, the Libertarian Party, you know, um, so yeah. So highly motivated and well organized libertarians looking to change the the world, huh? Absolutely, yes. Yep. Awesome. Well, hey, well, what what brought you to the liberty movement? You know, I'd like to talk about that. And what was the catalyst? How did you become an activist? How did you get involved with this whole libertarian type of movement, um, you know, originally? So I wish, I really do wish I had like the cool story, like everybody else that was like the Ron Paul moment. And, you know, it, I, I saw that and it, it, it uh, you know, it, it woke me up. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for me. Um, I've always been like a contrarian since I was young and I'm not, I know that sounds so cringe worthy to say, cause it's, but like, I, like since I was young, I've always, if, if people were going right, I would go left. I don't know why. It's just like an innate thing that's always been with me. Um, and I remember like in my formative years, Bush was president. And I remember everyone being like, not my president, obviously. So I was like, well, he's, he's certainly gonna be my president since everyone hates him. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's funny because of that, so many people thought like I was like super into politics and I knew what was like, what was what. And I rarely was, I didn't know shit. I couldn't have told you what the difference between the left and, and the right uh, were. Um, and I kind of just became like an online troll for like the Republican party. And there was, you know, in, within my family, we weren't religious. We weren't, you know, there was no reason for me to really be a Republican besides the fact that I just wanted to push back uh, against you know everyone's hatred of them, uh, uh, you know of the Republican Party, and you know it's funny too because I was thinking about this today. I remember like being invited to a Ron Paul group that people kids from my high school created, and again it just all over my head. Like I didn't even know what the messaging was. I just knew he was a Republican. Um, and what's fascinating about that group now that I think about it was like it was comprised of like, for lack of a better term, like I guess more like unpopular kids like nerdy types and also like the quarterback of like the high school of like, of like the football team so like that's just how great ron paul was it just like brought everybody together um 
but yeah, so I mean, years went by and I was just on like uh, Facebook shit posting, just trying to piss people off. Cause it always bothered me that so many people were like, they hated the right, but they had no idea why. So I kind of just was like, I, this drives me nuts. So I, I, I kind of just shit posted up until 2016. Um, and then during that time frame, I heard Dave Smith on the Joe Rogan experience. Now, one thing I should say, I've always had like real bad comprehension issues. So like, it's hard for me to like, kind of understand things. And when I heard Dave Smith on Rogan, he's like, so like gifted at articulating like messages that it, it finally, for the first time, politics was like digestible and like interesting. So then ironically, I became like engulfed and like with, with my fascination of politics because of him and like stumbled down a rabbit hole uh, on YouTube and ended up becoming like, you know, a full blown libertarian and like super actually like interested in politics. Um, and yeah, so I remember when that, that, that kind of, when I was tumbling down that rabbit hole, um, seeing a comment on Facebook, uh, again, it was like at the end of 2017, it was like Libertarian Party Mises Caucus. And I clicked it and I joined the group and the rest was history. Um, you know, I wanted to get involved. I'm originally from Pennsylvania and I, I remember wanting to get involved in PA, um, but then I, I think I got laid off at work. Um, so, uh, you know, my mind was kind of all over the place. And then I moved, then I got uh, rehired at my job and moved to Colorado. Um, and for that first year, I kind of wasn't involved. I moved to Colorado in May of 2019. Um, and then at the end of 2019, uh, you know, I, I was like, all right, now it's, I didn't know anybody. So I was like, now it's time to get involved and, and you know, meet people. And that's when I was introduced to Kyle Fury, who is um, the current uh, chair of the Denver um, uh, chapter of the Libertarian Party. Um, and he was also one of the state organizers for the Mises Caucus out here. Um, so I met him, like we got dinner one night. Um, and then he was like, yeah, come to the, the next, um, you know, Denver meetup, which I did. And I, that was like the, the, the elections and uh, I didn't plan on like, you know, running for anything or, or, or volunteering for anything, but like they needed a communications director uh, and nobody was, wanted to do it. So I was like, all right, I, I guess I'll do it. First meeting, uh, next thing you know, um, the communications director for, for Denver. Um, so after that months went by um, and then it became May. I became, a, and the reason I, I became a, uh, outreach director was, or excuse me, uh, communications director was because, uh, you know, I thought that's what you had to do to become a national delegate. Um, so then May comes around, I become a national, national delegate. I go to um, Orlando, um, this is 2020 now. Um, and I just, it was like one of the best experiences of my life. And I keep telling everybody, go to the, the national convention. It's such a cool experience. If you're on the fence about it, go. Um, so we went there and, and, you know, the Mises Caucus didn't get our chair, Josh Smith wasn't elected, but I mean, we had a, a huge turnout in person. I mean, we were the convention, but uh, I think we ended up taking 39% of the vote of the delegate chair, which compared to 2018, uh, I think we were uh, 19%. So, I mean, that's pretty good growth. And I mean, the writing's on the wall now for what's coming in, in Reno, I mean, um, so yeah, so I left that the convention so like amped up on liberty and like wanting to get even more involved. And at that time, there was a vacancy with for for outreach. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I might have rushed it. I was like, yeah, I'll do it, sure. Like I'll I'll fill it. Um, and at this time, I became like a state organizer for the Mises Caucus as well. Um, but I wasn't really actively doing anything uh, with it. Um, and at the time, there, and I should, I should back up at the convention, I think there was four of us in person from Colorado that were Mises. It was me, Kyle, uh, and one other person actually. And then we left there having, um, I wouldn't say converted, but our, the current um, communications director for the state, Joshua Wallamont, you know, just by like hanging out with us and hearing our ideas and seeing like how they were treating Josh uh, Smith he just became one of us. So we left, we, we went there as three, left as four. And there was two other people, phantom delegates that we couldn't figure out who they were that were, that were Mises. 
Hmm. Uh, eventually we figured out who they were. So, I mean, we left the convention. There was like roughly six of us, right? Um, so then I became, uh, you know, the outreach director for the state. Um, and, and I went in there, you know, so full of life and ready to make changes. And um, it was just kind of like one black pill after another that kind of led to me being like, all right, time to, time to get the music of, of Colorado going. Um, and, and I realized in hindsight, like actually a couple months before the convention, like I, I, I held a lot of like animosity towards the board. Um, and I'm realizing now it's like, it's like an impossible thing to ask anybody to do, to come in on this, on this board and like give a lot of time and effort to it. It's like, you know, it's, there's no compensation for anything you're doing. It's, you're doing it out of, you know, wanting to get shit done and wanting to see uh, Liberty advanced uh, with the libertarian, you know, using the libertarian party. Um, so yeah, there was a, a, a few moments that really black pilled me where I tried to get things going and put initiatives forward where I either didn't, I either had people not responding to me or not showing up to what I was trying to do or be really engaging. So that it was a uh, Thanksgiving break um, of 2020 where I was like, fuck it. I'm going full in with the Mises caucus. I'm going to organize the fuck out of this. Um, and not, and the music caucus, obviously we were there beforehand, but it was just kind of nothing had ever, and that's no fault to anybody's um, that were that the previous organizers is just a hard task to take on. Um, so I took it on and I really just put the, the pedal to the metal and really started organizing, you know, creating really, I organized the, the Google drive that we had, um, you know, I scrubbed all of the all of the people that we had that had, you know, filled out our questionnaire or come through that we had information for. Um, I got Zoom meetings going. I really pushed the Discord like hard, like getting everybody into the Discord and community, uh, communicating, building a community. Um, and yeah, so six months later, we went from like four of us to an hour, we're pushing 120 members. Um, and that's kind of just the story of how I became like the, I guess like the, the main organizer. It was just frustration. Um, and yeah, so. Nice, frustration's a great motivator, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, great. Well, I, 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 yeah, let me just ahead. say like, I can't be upset with anybody who is on the board because again, like, and, you know, I'm sure we'll get into this. It's just not set up in a way that's really it really helps people like be successful within those positions. Um, so. I can understand what you're saying. Just the, the structure of the board and how the party's organized. Is that really some of the challenges you've, you've seen? It's not conducive to success for any of the people that become board members. And that's yeah. what, you know, one of the things that we really need to fix. So it's no fault to anybody who's on the board that may have been voted off or anything like that. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Just curious. So what, what at national convention was the most exciting part? You said it was one of the best experiences of your life. You really enjoyed it. What, um, what was it about the national convention in, in Florida that really was, was so great? And what's crazy about the national convention in Florida was that there was most of the people were online. So it wasn't even a full convention. Um, it's just like cool being in there. Like you, it's a, a massive like room, um, obviously with like the podium at the front, which is tables, as far as I can see that are separated by each state. Um, and now mean you, mean, uh, mind you, like again, most of the people were online, so it wasn't even at full capacity. So I can only imagine what Reno is gonna be like, and I'm so excited for it. Um, but just seeing all of the people like, like passionately like argue and debate and like yell out and also just getting to meet all of like the libertarians from like across the country. Like I, I made so like, I, like, that's what I'm so looking forward to, uh, to uh, with Reno is getting to see all of the people that I made friends with at Orlando. Like these people, like, most of these people weren't even in the Mises caucus. Actually, all of the people that I, I made friends with that weren't in the Mises caucus. Um, so it's, it, it's just a, a really cool experience um, to be a part of and, and to meet like-minded folks um, and to create bonds and just uh, to be a part of it all. It's uh, to be a part of something bigger than yourself, you know? That's cool. Yeah, find people who have similar interests. You can have exciting conversations with. You don't have to start off with, well, what do we do about the roads, right? 
exactly. have a little bit more in-depth, high-level conversations with people and kind of, you know, some philosophical ideas that you don't normally get to share with, with just the common people in your everyday life. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. One thing, I, a, a few things that were interesting too from your story was basically like social media. Social media seemed to be a huge reason of, or a reason why you got involved with the Liberty Movement, Libertarian Party, the Mises Caucus in general. And I think that's interesting because it's, it's something I know the Mises Caucus has been really uh, focusing a lot on is the social media presence and kind of trying to get out there and reach new people and put out there some more radical ideas, um, you know, to get that attention. So, you know, that's, that's fascinating. And I think, you know, we have, there is an incredible opportunity for libertarians, for people who believe in liberty and freedom to reach new audiences that we couldn't in the past. And, you know, people like Dave Smith and, and others who can use those venues to basically reach untold numbers is pretty exciting. I mean, it's pretty awesome to see how the Mises Caucus has kind of built up and all this excitement and kind of reinvigorating the Libertarian Party because I know a lot of people who are registered libertarians weren't that excited about the last two presidential candidates. Nope. And with a lot of the messaging seemed either like Republican light or Democrat light. I mean, what's, you know, what's the difference? You know, if you don't have a bold message, if you don't have something that clearly separates you from the mainstream, then what's the point of doing any of it, you know? 100%. And, and that's like one of the main, um, like the idea of the Mises Caucus is, you know, Anybody who thinks that Joe Jorgensen had any chance of winning, for it's like, what, what planet are you on? Um, and, and most of the people that are in the Mises Caucus came to libertarianism through bold messaging. Like a lot of the people that, that were from the Ron Paul um, moment, it's because he was uh, you know, on TV saying the most radical shit and you know, that stuck with people and that got people thinking. Same for me with Dave Smith, same for a lot of people with a lot of different um, mediums that like that, that they came in from. And, and I, I believe that you know, what we really hope to achieve is you know, bold messaging at the highest level to kind of wake people up and get people uh, intrigued and wanting to uh, kind of dive more into the, the, the whole theory of it all. Um, and then really support candidates at the local level. Um, because that's, those are the races that are the most winnable. Um, you know, you kind of win from the bottom and um, recruit from the top. Like, you know, the messaging, you, you know, this bold messaging while winning at the local level. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. I mean, somebody like Dave Smith on Joe Rogan has a bigger audience than probably the presidential debates do at this point, especially among young people. So to be able to reach that type of audience with a message, somebody that's kind of challenging the status quo, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. But then yeah. my Nick, yeah. But where do people hear this messaging from normally? They wouldn't. So, and that's why it's so important. It's like, all right, Joe Jorgensen, you have, you have, you think we're, you know, we're physically conservative, socially, but it's like, yeah, that doesn't, some people, most people have no idea. Like anything, most people have no fucking clue about politics or the difference in an ideology. They're just kind of just going with the flow. So when you say something crazy, like, you know, legalized child labor, and then and people go, wait, what? And then you can explain it to them. Then they go, oh shit, I never thought of it that way. That's always, all the people that I've been able to convert, it's always like, oh, I never thought of it that way. So. Well, especially in this day and age where you have to have something bold, you know, in this clickbait world we live in, you gotta have mm -hmm. something outrageous, even just to get people's attention. If you have that milk toast kind of mild watered down message who cares right you're just mm -hmm. going to get lost in the noise yep and i think that's part of the reason donald trump was so successful because he was willing to say whatever he wanted to he didn't care what anybody he didn't care what anybody thought he was just going to get out there and say stuff and people were like finally here's somebody who's going to speak his mind who's bold who's who's not just towing the line so Absolutely. it's interesting to see how um people within the libertarian party can kind of adapt to this changing world we're into now. Absolutely. So, so part of my question, I guess, would be, and you covered this a little bit, but what are the goals of the Mises Caucus? Um, I know you talked about, you know, converting people or spreading the message of liberty at that high level in that Ron Paul type of sense, as we saw in 2008, 2012, and then at the local level, level um, recruit candidates, get them elected to local offices to actually make meaningful change in communities. It, what, are, what are some of the other goals or what's kind of the, the idea behind the Mises Caucus uh, takeover of the Libertarian Party, I guess? I know you covered this a little bit, but is there any more, more to that? Uh, it's, 
it's more so of just getting prince it's making the libertarian party libertarian again um and sticking to the principles of uh, of libertarianism and, and kind of getting uh the idea of libertarianism out there and, and you know i think one of the issues i think one of the one of the main drivers of the the creation of the Mises caucus is bill weld people like that getting in these these using these former Democrats and Republicans that kind of just hop into the Libertarian Party, say some milk toast shit, and then roll out is one of the big, one of the, one of the biggest drivers for recruitment and for uh, the creation of the, of the Mises Caucus. Um, and it's really, it's, it, it, it's, it's electing people uh, who, who are Libertarian and, uh, and are willing to to fight like a libertarian and, and to speak like a libertarian and to not play uh, in the same, you know, to, to not play within the, the, like the, the, how am I trying to say this? It, it's, you know, there's this kind of field that you play in that's, you know, that the Republicans and the Democrats have established. And we kind of go in there and try to work within that work with what's been established and try to be like, oh, we don't want to make a, a scene or we don't want to be too crazy. When really it's like, we should be in there and fucking a bull in a china shop being like, no, you're a liar, you're a liar. Here's how this really works. They're lying to you, fuck them. Um, and things are never going to change uh, if you keep voting for the lesser of two evils, so. Well, if you want to be successful at spreading this message of liberty, why not? do what Ron Paul did uh, and go into the Republican Party? Or why not have a Mises caucus in the Republicans, in the Democrats, or run Libertarians as Democrats or Republicans? I know that's some of the feedback I get from people who are strong believers in liberty and want to see a freer society. Well, they say, well, you know, you're just, you're, you're, you're battling uphill to create a whole new third party. And don't get me wrong, the Libertarian Party has been out there for 50 years. It's a well-established ballot access in 50 states. But nonetheless, why not? Just use the Republican Party or the Democrat Party to, to do this. Why use the Libertarian Party? Uh, it's funny because I remember once I became a Libertarian, I was like, oh, I'm a minority now in the political world. And then I joined the Libertarian Party as a member of the Mises Caucus. And I'm like, oh, I'm a minority within a minority now. That's <laughs> wonderful. Uh, I don't think that uh, our, our, our principles and what we believe in could ever really be take hold within the, the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. They have their established um, ideology um, that I don't, obviously to, that we have some, there's some overlap with both of the, the, the two main parties, but I think going with, going in, here's the thing too, it's like we need something fresh as well. Like everybody's tired of the Republicans, everyone's tired mm -hmm. of, the, of the, the Democrats. And we have an opportunity here with this third party to really make it into a third party that has an impact. Um, and there's always gonna be liberty-minded Democrats and Republicans um, that are gonna run as Republicans and Democrats um, that eventually hopefully one day that we can work with uh, and you know, in coalition with uh, on issues and achieve, achieve shit. But it's, I understand the sentiment of like, why don't you just stay the course and because this infrastructure of Republic, that the Republicans and Democrats have set up, is, it's a lot easier to, to, to go through there. But um, I think what the Mises Caucus wants to do, it, it's time to set up our own thing and to be our own thing because um, we're, we're drastically different from the both Republicans and Democrats. And it's time to kind of articulate that and show that. Awesome. Yeah, that's fascinating. And I think that's a bold message that a lot of people should be excited about, you know, those of us who are, are been the Liberty activists for a while here in Colorado, looking for an organization to, to work with to this framework, like you said, to kind of get involved with and, and actually make things happen to get shit done, as you like to say, you know, 100%. Um, and in terms of making an impact, Funkhauser, you have definitely made an impact here in Colorado, in the Libertarian Party. And so I would say, can you talk a little bit about some of that impact at the convention last month? Um, the takeover of the Colorado Libertarian Party by the Mises Caucus is one of the biggest stories, political stories in Colorado this year, for sure. 
And I'd love to hear a little bit about that. And clearly, you know, you did a great job organizing, getting people to turn out, getting people there. But yeah, fill us in a little bit. What happened? How did you do it? And uh, yeah, what was it like? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I guess in a way it was sort of a cl clandestine movement. Uh, I felt weird about it at first just because I was, you know, also on the board. Um, and I, and I, I just, I wasn't sure how to go about it. So I kind of kept under, under wraps um, my involvement in it. Um, so, you know, and, and again, I don't know if there's any sort of, uh, there's nothing wrong with being, a, you know, and by the way, like when I came onto the board, like in my, my bio, I mean, like I made, it was no secret that I was, uh, you know, dedicated to the Mises caucus. Um, so, yeah, you know, it, it's, it took six months of organizing. Um, it was a lot of just grinding it out and getting people involved and, and working through the, the data that we have of people who wanted to be involved and getting them involved. Um, it, it was really like my whole focus was building a community. Um, and, and, you know, I, I kept saying this, um, uh, community first, politics second. Um, and the byproduct of building a community would be the political achievements because you know by the, the, the byproduct of the bond would be people wanting to go to bat for each other um, at the convention and um, so yeah you know we really I really focused in on the discord and getting everybody in there and centralized um, and, and communicating um, I you know getting uh, bi-weekly and then weekly zoom meetings going so people could see each other and get a sense of you know who everybody was and kind of build that that connection. Um, and that excitement. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of how it came to be. And we put our, our, one of the things too about this is, you know, I, I took it very seriously. And when we were putting our slate together, one of the things I kept saying was, if you're not 100% serious about being on the board, do not, do not run. Like it's, it's that simple. Like we may not take control of the board, but we want people on there who are, who are serious and who are going to get shit done. Um, and fortunately, we have we had seven Mises members um, who were serious and, and wanting to get stuff done um, out of the eleven available seats. Um, we endorsed four um, non Mises members, um, and you know, by the by the end of the convention, we we took we seated ten out of the eleven available. Uh, seats. So it was a uh, pretty decisive and uh, a pretty big success. So, uh, you know, it's weird being like, I've, I've never been in that position of leadership before. So I was kind of just figuring out, you know, as I went and it's just crazy, like how proud of like all everybody in the, every member that like showed up, you know, the, uh, God, it was like, there was a few moments where like, I was like touched by like the speeches given by our candidates. Where I was like, hold it together. Don't get upset. Like, this is like, because it's, it, it's moving. It, it, it's, you know, I, I was proud of everybody. And, and it was even like, the, like, what was so awesome about it was like people that were sh that showed up who I hadn't seen in a while that were like running up to the mic to be like, this is bullshit or, or people showing up for the first time and like willingly uh, giving introductions for the candidates, like just having like, the balls on people that like to get up there and and you know, introduce people and 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 speak in front of a large crowd. Um, now I kind of had the was tasked with that as well, and I could fucking blow it. I was like, I got up there and I was like, ah, uh, uh. <laughs> I think at that point people knew like what the deal was, and that I was like sort of like the villain. Uh, so like when I got up there and like looked at everybody, I was like, ah, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it it was just again that was just such an awesome experience, and I couldn't be more proud of. Uh, the candidates, the members who showed up and just what we've built. It's, it's, it's really exciting. And now I really hope we can, with that momentum, build that same sort of what we just did, that magic with the LPCO. Uh, you know, like I said, we're about like 120 members now. There's 40,000 registered libertarians that are inactive that if we can get, if we can, we can touch them, uh, you know, and get them involved, who knows what the fuck we can do um, in this state. And that's probably the most exciting part. Uh, right now. So. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. 40,000 people that can swing elections across the state. I mean, the margin of victory for a lot of 
races is is so slim. So mm -hmm. mobilizing uh, forty thousand people or mobilizing you know tireless, energized activists who are willing to put the work in and get organized. I mean that's it's quite the accomplishment. And you know I really one of the most important things I think about what you did and the Mises Caucus crew there is the fact that you were the most well-organized group that showed up and really, really, you know, that's kind of the, the goal of political success or that is how you achieve political success is just getting people to show up, getting organized, getting people there and getting people to get stuff done. So mm -hmm. the fact that you were able to do that at the convention, make that happen. I mean, that's who deserves to win. I mean, outright, I mean, you know, did any of the detractors aside, whoever's the most well-organized should win. That is the key to politi political success, not just at the party level, but actually at the election level, the legislative level, across the board. Uh, you know, so. it, was, it was getting people into the caucus. Are you registered? How, were you registered 90 days before the convention? Because that's one of the rules. You have to be uh, uh, registered with the state of Colorado as a libertarian 90 days before the convention takes place. So getting everybody in, making sure they're registered seeing if they're going to be able to show up. Did you book a hotel uh, once they got there? Um, are they in the our Telegram uh, chat um, to know who we're voting for? Uh, um, you know, at one point we had a, one of our members, Travis, who's like seven feet tall. I'm like, look, stand up and put your hand up. So everyone knows to look at you, what, you know, what, what decision <laughs> we're going to make. Um, it, it was things like that. Um, yeah, and it was just making sure, you know, we all were all there all on the same page and had a clear plan. And, you know, it was a lot of, yeah, literally being a state organizer is literally just being organized as shit. So, nice. um, you know, we, we organized um, uh, a Mises mixer, um, you know, for so people could show up to that and see that we're not these awful people. <laughs> and, you know, it was a, it was an interesting weekend for sure. Yeah. Do you think, what do you think about the surprise? Cause that's when I showed up, I got to the uh, convention that Saturday night, went straight to the Mises mixer and I was kind of surprised. Like, oh my gosh, look how many people are here. I mean, it was incredible. I said, this is, this is where the party's at hundred mm -hmm. percent. You know, this is where the energy's at. People are having drinks, people are having fun. They're having great conversations. And it was pretty cool to see so many people there in that Mises caucus mixer. But something I did notice was a lot of people, the old, the kind of the old guard of the Libertarian Party of Colorado seemed pretty surprised. They seemed pretty taken aback. Like they had no idea, almost blindsided that there was this well-organized group of people, these dedicated activists who wanted to come in and actually make some change and make some noise. You know, what did, what did you think about that? Did you see that? Did you see some surprise from people that they were just oh, didn't yeah. expect it? Which I thought was strange because I mean, for months before this convention, this was happening state convention by state convention. Um, so I, maybe they, they might have anticipated somewhat of a, you know, of a Mises group being there. Um, but I don't think maybe they expected how many we had. Um, and, you know, uh, it's funny, because like that first day, I think we in that room, we just everything that we wanted to pass, we passed. And I think as a reaction to that, the next day, we saw a lot more people that maybe wouldn't have been there show up um and then you know once the election started and like the waterfall you know, the landslide victory after victory it kind of just you you saw like the, the air was taken out of the room and people were upset throwing fits and so well i can understand you know some people were kind of upset that they they thought they were going to win this position or they thought they were going to get their board position and they didn't make it you know of course that was upsetting to a lot of people um, aside from that, in your opinion, what has caused a lot of the other pushback to the to the Mises Caucus and Libertarian Party of Colorado? Um, it's interesting because like in Colorado, I, I don't think necessarily like as other states, it was like the Mises Caucus or these bad guys, it's they're coming to take over. I think that the inner like party dynamics of the LPCO, it, it was kind of always just like two sides um, were kind of always at each other's throats. Um, and then the Mises caucus came in and was kind of just took over. I was like, we don't give a fuck about the, the past um, uh, uh, fights that were going on that preceded us. It's like, we're here to get you done. Um, so you can either get on board or not. Um, and I said this before, we're like the, the check on the bullshit uh, that had gone on before us. Like all of the infighting, like we don't give a shit about it. Um, 
So we're kind of like the, you know, the, the check on all the fighting. Like it, it stops with us. Like all of the, the, the sides fighting, it's like, we're going to put all that aside and focus on advancing liberty. Um, Cause that's what we care about. And I think um, now that we've taken over a lot of the, the, the talking points of, oh, the Mises caucus or these bigots or this or that, it, it's starting to like surface a little bit, but not as much because again, we, a lot of us know each other. So it's like, yeah, we know we're not, you know, we're not bigots, you know, what, right? I think the biggest pushback in Colorado specifically is uh, inexperience, which is understandable. Um, but I, I don't think it really matters that much because, you know, as a member of the previous board, and again, no fault to anybody who was on the board, nothing was really getting done. Nothing was really happening. Nothing was exciting. And it's not to say that there weren't people doing things, but um, I think this, this fresh, clean start, this new slate of people, um, it's good for the party. Uh, it's good for the LPCO. It's good for Colorado in general. Um, and I, I think the people that are really upset by it just need to take a breath. I understand uh, they're upset, but really, um, they haven't given us much of a chance yet. It's been a lot of screaming on Facebook and um, which is unfortunate, but um, we're not here to kick anybody out of the party. We want to work with any, everybody. We want, we want to see the advancement of Liberty. Um, so anybody that's feeling like they're being left out or it, it's not the case, reach out. I always put this, reach out to me, have a conversation with me. Nobody wants to see you leave. Uh, nobody wants you to feel uh, like you're politically homeless now, which was a big thing going on a couple of days after the election, after the convention, the people were, con it's like, what? first off, like you weren't that involved to begin with. Now it's all of a sudden you're politically, it's like, give, give me a fucking break. Um, those people were not going to pander to. That's, that's one thing. Like there's some people on the board who I really like, who on the previous board, like, uh, like uh, Victoria, the previous chair. Uh, again, I didn't make the decisions on who we were going to endorse. It was a collective decision with the, with the caucus. Um, I really like Victoria. I think she's awesome. Um, and she's one of these people who uh, she got voted out. She didn't run away. She's still involved. She's still trying to advance a little bit because she's a, a real one. Same with uh, Eric Mulder. He's fantastic. Uh, Betty Rose Ryan. She's fantastic. She showed up to our first board meeting, like our un kind of unofficial uh, business meeting. She was there. Uh, a week or two after, uh, these are the people I have the utmost respect for, because even though they, they lost, they're still involved. They still because it's about advancing liberty. It's not a, it's not a it's not a social club. How some people are like you're ruining the part. It's like no, we're ruining your club, and that's why you're so upset. And it's it, it's bullshit. And it, it's really it, it, and I don't mean to get so frustrated with these people, but it's like such a quick turnaround time to to not giving us being like I'm politically homeless and I hate it's. It's like you're in your forties and older, like be an adult, like take it on the chin. You lost, you weren't organized. And now there's a, there's a fuck, there's new management in town. So either stay with us uh, if you actually care about Liberty or, or stop making this about you being like, I'm, oh, you've, it's stop with the melodrama. So I'm from the East coast. Like cut that bullshit out. Like, like I said, like we're here to get shit done. Like cut that. Like, like, I have, I only have so much of a tolerance for that kind of shit. Um, I like riders. I want people who, do, who get shit done and who are, who are fighters. But if you're just going to fucking sulk all day on Facebook, I, I don't, I don't have time for that. Awesome. Well, great, great. So yeah, I mean, definitely the most organized group one, that's the name of the game of politics. Uh, so you know, what is the future of the Colorado Libertarian Party now that the Mises Caucus has taken the board? What is your message to these detractors, to maybe people who are unsure of the Mises Caucus, of Libertarian Party members, people who've been out of the loop for so long? What is your message to them? What does the future of the Colorado Libertarian Party have in store? And why should they be excited? Uh, so the, the new board is how we like to describe us as taxi, uh, techie, Sexy and libertarian. It's, it's a, a, it, it, that's like one of the, the, the best parts about uh, the Mises Caucus, what you get with us is it's a lot of software engineers, coders, people that work, uh, you know, cybersecurity, a lot of uh, tech savvy people um, that are gonna bring that into the party. Uh, one of the issues with the, the LPCO like when I came onto the board is very antiquated. A lot of the method, methods uh, the way um, things were done, I remember like one of the one of the one of the biggest black pills that I took 
when I first got on the board was standing outside of a Walmart trying to get signatures. It's like, we have the data. Why don't we just scrub the data, which I wanted to do and they didn't let me. Um, I was like, I'm really good at Excel. Can I download the data? And it was like this big thing. I was like, okay, all right. But it's like, why don't we, we use that data to kind of figure out where, where the signatures are and who we need and reach out to those people instead of trying to pander to a bunch of people outside of a Walmart and hope these people live within the, the limits, uh, the, you know, the city limits. Um, but yeah, so we're here to kind of centralize communication, get actually increased communication, uh, improve the technology and just build an infrastructure that's, that, that will drive success for anybody, Mises or not, that comes into the board, comes onto the board and they can, can, can easily transition in and start getting shit done. I know I've said that a hundred times. Um, but it's not, I think when I, uh, one of the, uh, again, now we're coming back to the, my black pill moments. One of the things like when I came on board, I'm like, is there like a, um, a, uh, an onboarding process? Like, is there like someone going to try and there wasn't like, there was, uh, um, a continuity binder, which I couldn't find. Um, so again, it was a lot of things like that structural issues with the LPCO that really, was the impetus for me being like, all right, I'm going full in with the state organizing for the Mises caucus. And that's what a lot of the things what we're going to try to do now is, again, fix the infrastructure. It's like, how can you run candidates or get shit done when it's, it's so poorly held together? You need something, you need a foundation that's strong enough that everybody can hop on uh, to really have an impact and, and uh, to bring about change. So um, we're going to, we're going to bring, we're bringing the technology to the LPCO. Uh, we're bringing the, the LPCO into the 21st century, 22nd century, whatever century we're in now. So, Awesome. One of the things I'm most excited about, and I know other people kind of in the liberty movement here in Colorado have said as well, is they're just happy to see these this Ron Paul liberty types, this excitement that's been around for a long time, these, these excited, into, people excited again, basically, you know, people kind of ready to do something, to get stuff done, you know, that there's now a group of people committed and activated who are going to work together instead of just going, everybody going in their own different ways where people are doing this over here, doing this over there. It's like, here's a movement. Here's a movement of people who, you know, are kind of that Ron Paul Liberty types, basically who are, who are ready to get stuff done and get and are excited about it. I mean, it is pretty exciting to see that happening and the potential there for mm -hmm. people who are say, who are ready, who are ready to go out there and actually make stuff happen to spread the message of Liberty and cause actual change. Not something I'm very excited about. Uh, regarding the, yeah, 100%. Regard, well, what about the future then in terms of the presidential election? Because I know the Mises caucus has been big on that 2024 presidential election. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about how you become a national delegate. What, is, what are the goals there? Kind of, can you talk a little bit about that? What, what is the Mises caucus trying to accomplish going into that 2024 uh, presidential election in terms of getting the right candidate up there? So uh, I guess first it's gonna be 2022 in Reno. We're gonna elect uh, Angela McCardell for chair. Uh, she was actually at the uh, convention in Colorado. She was giving me a lot of great advice. She's really awesome. And I couldn't be more excited for her to become chair. Um, so that's the first step in, in, in 2022 in Reno is getting her elected. Um, and then in 2024, it's getting uh, our, our candidates, our Mises endorsed candidates uh, or Mises members as uh, the candidates. Um, and we're thinking about putting up some pretty bold, pretty bold candidates to really get out there and spread the message. Um, I don't think it's a secret now, but, you know, Dave Smith is really the guy we want on our presidential ticket. Um, again, it'd be a miracle if he actually became president, but the reality is that he's going to go on all the talk shows, all, you know, all, 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 all he's going to run through the corporate press and he's going to talk that liberty shit. Uh, as he likes to say, and and get that message out there. Um, you know, I, I send his pod, I send his podcast to one of my friends who was a lifelong Democrat. Who's like, I'm a libertarian now. Another one who was a Bernie bro who was like, who ended up uh, voting for Trump uh, back in PA. He's like, I want to vote for libertarian candidate, but I can't. I just I have to, you know, because that's that's you know, it, it just not that Dave Smith made him vote for Trump, but he just kind of pointed out the flaws of the left, which my friend was you know a part of. Uh, so yeah, I mean, he, he's the goat at articulating and, and spreading the message. So um, 
that's what we're going to do in Colorado. We're really going to focus on local elections as well. Um, so that's great. That's really exciting. So how can people get involved now that there's this new energy, this new life to the Colorado Libertarian Party, maybe people who've not been paying attention for a while or people who are ready to kind of get involved. How, how can they get involved? What, what, what do you recommend? What should they do? Uh, so if you specifically want to get involved with the Mises Caucus of Colorado, um, you know, we have a, a Facebook page. It's um, Mises Colorado. Um, is that the Facebook? I forget. I, you know, honestly, there's so, we have so many different channels. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, the Mises Caucus of Colorado is a Facebook page. Um, you can email us directly at uh, comesescaucus uh, at gmail.com. Uh, that way you can kind of fill out our intake form. Uh, then we can onboard you into our caucus, um, into, into the, the state caucus, and then into our Discord. Um, if you just want to get involved. So here's the reality is we are the, the libertarian, you know, we're the, still the Mises caucus. We have our own private Discord and, and channels of communication. But at the same time now, all of our goals are really the goals of the LPCO because we are the LPCO. So if you just want to get involved with the LPCO, um, you know, we, we created a Discord um, that's meant to centralize communication and bring all of Colorado together. You know, it worked for the, the Mises caucus. It should work for the, the LPCO. I mean, we have, um, you know, every a channel for every single county that there is. Um, so, you know, we're, we're filling, we're getting people connected uh, using this. Like uh, a good example is Larimer. You know, we have only a couple of people in there, but they're like, we should get together. We should try to get shit done and meet up and start something. Um, and that's what our, our goal is and our hope is for every single county channel. Um, so yeah, join the uh, LPCO Discord. Uh, there's a link for that in the Colorado uh, Activists. I, they just changed the name of it. So um, I think it's Colorado Liberty Activists. There's a Facebook page, join that. Um, it's pinned there. Um, yeah, and that's a, a great way to get involved. Reach out to your, to your county affiliates, um, uh, email them. You can get that on the website and, and just get involved and you know join the community, join the fight. Well, great. And I'll post all the links uh, below here in the notes for anybody who's looking. But yeah, exciting times. Funkhauser, uh, thank you very much for being here. I really enjoyed the conversation. I'm looking forward to hearing more about the Libertarian Party's future and what, what's going to be happening. So well, we'll be talking again soon, I hope. And before I let you go, do you have any book recommendations? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's the book that really took me after I went down the rabbit hole was um, Ron Paul Revolution. Is that the name of the book? Um, I have a terrible memory, just an FYI. God, I can see the cover of the book, but I can't remember the name. Um, God, do you know what I'm talking about? Is it on your- Yeah, it the, Revo the, the Revolution. The Revolution, okay, Paul. yes. Yes, that was the book that really uh, like helped me find my way. Um, God, I read a couple other books. Um, Oh, Anatomy of the State, that's a short one if you really want to kind of get the gist of uh, how evil the state is. Uh, God, there's a plethora of books. Um, but yeah, you know, there's a ton of them out there. Um, but before I go, I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity and having me on. It was, uh, it was really awesome and, you know, looking forward to what we can do in the future together. Um, so again, appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time, Funkhauser. Look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Wish you well and good luck in all your future endeavors. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it.